the harpoons because today we are tackling brushes within Photoshop. Adobe Photoshop. Very nice. Very nice. Anyway, as always, let's start off with a new document. Go to 1024 by 768. We aren't really going to be doing much, we just need a standard size document so I can show you what these brushes do. And uh, I'll close out the brushes window to show you how to get to it. So you go to window up here, and then brushes, or you could hit F5 on your keyboard. And that brings up the basic window palette for brushes. <coughs> but this is not a quarter of what the brushes palette actually includes which is pretty funny to me at least but um anyway you click here and uh you can you can go up to the expanded view and this really gives you like 20 times at least more um brushing capabilities and customability customability i'm making up my own words good stuff so let's go over this. Let's really uh let's drill down into brushes. So this is the brushes window, brushes palette. As I said, it can be toggled with F5 on your keyboard. You start off here with you have the I'm just gonna go down the list. You have brush presets, brush tip shape, shape dynamics, scattering, texturing, dual brush options, very handy, color dynamics, other dynamics, and we aren't gonna touch the noise, wet edges, airbrush. Um, smoothing is by default enabled, or we're not going to project any textures either. So let me just go back up the list and uncheck these so you can see one at a time what each one is doing. But before we go into here, let's go up top. Let's make sure off our canvas, off the brushes window, or right here, you can right click and change the diameter. Notice how that changes the diameter down here in our preview window of our brush. We go up, and it gets larger, 58 pixels. We go down, it gets smaller. So that's just our diameter, or the overall circumference of our brush in terms of pixels. I'm at about 30 pixels, that seems fine to me. And I just have a default soft brush. So uh, yeah, this is where you can change your brush tip shape. And you can also change your brush tip shape by expanding this and right clicking on your document with the brush tool selected. And of course, and you can scroll down the list and pretty much choose the same brushes. Well, this is just a different view. So that's pretty much, I mean, it's pretty uh, pretty self-explanatory brush presets. You know, which brush are you starting out with, and how big or small is it in terms of pixels. So uh, now let's go down to the brush tip shape. Again, you can change the tip of the brush, the diameter. You can see how it changes down here in our preview pane, preview panel. You can change the hardness of the brush, which changes the softened edges so to speak so you can either choose a default you know 1 through 19 of the brushes and they already have a really hard edge or you can choose the soft brushes and if you just want it to be not so soft so that's the spacing you can up the hardness and that just the outer edges of the brush get feathered just a bit but we'll go back down to zero we're gonna do that with most of these presets so I can show you individually what each one really does and um, Yep, the spacing, also pretty self-explanatory. Um, you can see here, that is what the spacing does. Pretty interesting. And let's drag the spacing back down to zero so it's solid, like such. And uh, all right, ship tape, ship, or I'm sorry, shape dynamics, excuse me. Excuse me, shape dynamics. You have size jitter. This is going to determine the randomness, up to 100%, of how big your brush is in terms of pixels. So, you can see here, if I bring it down to 50%, down in our preview panel, the overall size of the brush is random, larger or smaller, by 50%. And this always, under the shape dynamics checkbox, under this tab here, everything starts off by default according to the brush presets meaning the brush shape initially and the diameter and we're at a diameter of 20 pixels so everything down here is going to be based off of that diameter so if I up the diameter just to prove my point if we go up to 70 pixels you'll see here if I up the size jitter 
randomness, it's going to be based roughly around 75 pixels. But we're going to go back down to something more reasonable, like 30 pixels. And uh, this is uh, where also, for those of you who have Wacom tablets and you do digital art, this is going to be very useful for you because you can select the pin pressure. I have a Wacom tablet, but it isn't plugged in right now, so it probably wouldn't function properly. But um, I'm going to set that to off. But right here, if you want to toggle the hardness of your brush or how sensitive it is, wink, wink, hint, hint, you would t click this uh, drop down and you click on pin pressure. And there you have it. You can also customize the minimum diameter according to how hard you press down on your Wacom tablet, things like that. But for those of us who don't have it, let's just put it to off so that doesn't interfere. And we're going to bring our size jitter back down to zero, of course, for all presets because we have to see what each one does individually. So here's our angle jitter. Of course, you're not going to notice anything on this because it's a, it's a uh, solid circular brush. But uh, if we go up to the brush presets and we have something a little less spherical, like this, so to speak, go back down to the shape dynamics and change the angle jitter, you will see exactly what that does. And that gives you a nice little grungy brush. Very nice. <clears throat> So let's hit Control Z to undo that, and uh, let's drag the angle jitter back down. Of course, you can control that with your pen pressures tool, and you can control the roundness jitter with that as well. So let's continue on down to scattering. This is also pretty self-explanatory. Every time you know the brush is actually going to paint onto the canvas, it randomly, depending on the slider here, will determine the X and Y position in which it's supposed to paint on there or the scatter so to speak so you can see that is definitely pretty crazy pretty crazy great way of covering the canvas in a random manner so to speak if you were to download various brushes but um anyway and let's bring that back down to zero you also have the count you're not going to notice much of anything here because overall our uh, spacing is set to zero so you're not really going to notice anything with the count, but you can kind of tell if I do it slowly. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but um, it does kind of soften and harden the edges depending on how many are actually being put on there. We'll bring that da uh, back down to one because we have to have one being put on there. Here's your count jitter. You're also not going to notice anything on there because it's the same thing as the count, but it randomizes it upon the slider. So continuing down pretty self-explanatory all these do I mean you have the texture dual brush color dynamics other dynamics I will go into other dynamics but you have the texture I mean you can load a texture you have the Photoshop default textures which are really just for you know placeholder textures not really actually good at anything but um, you can scale the texture within the brush so let's go back to a regular good old brush here like a solid brush not soft and let's select a texture select that first select the texture of uh, say checkerboard and you can scale up the texture and it'll affect the brush outer rims dynamically according to that texture so you can texture each tip and you could go more into that but um, it's really I don't I don't use it that much I'm gonna show you what else I use instead I generally just go dual brush so I may download a I don't know a rock brush or a grunge brush I have a very large collection of brushes and if I want to mix two together instead of using the texture I use dual brush and this is really useful you'll see here if we click on the star so to speak or uh, let's actually get a softer brush so you can kinda of see what I'm talking about don't wanna collapse that so I can actually enable the dual brush and you'll greatly see Photoshop actually dynamically will create you a new brush based upon the second brush or quote unquote the dual brush so you have that there and it creates you a second brush you can do this for stars you can kind of see the, the triangular edges along that that's the stars being affected merged into our spherical brush you can do the same thing with other brushes and it's very interesting